Hi everyone, Ron Bonnick from uh, RL Detman Startup and Warranty. Uh, today uh, we are going to go through the AM water heater and do a fireside maintenance. Uh, we are the Airco manufacturers reps, so um, today we're going to go through the module unit and uh, show you how to do a fireside inspection and cleaning. And um, this pretty much pertains to any of the Giannone or Symmetra style heat exchangers. This is a water tube style heat exchanger, not a fire tube and it's a modular boiler with uh, multiple uh, heat exchangers inside of it. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're gonna need is a couple tools. Um, I have a nitrogen tank uh, for blowing out the burner and for blowing out the heat exchanger. Compressed air works just as well. Uh, garden hose to rinse out the heat exchanger. And then a uh, standard uh, flathead Phillips screwdriver, 10 millimeter wrench, uh, T20 Torx bit, a 10 millimeter socket with an extension, crescent wrench, and a couple of uh, wire brushes. First thing we want to do is uh, make sure we isolate it. Um, power shut off, gas is shut off to the unit. Uh, even though it's a modular unit, you cannot isolate each individual heat exchanger uh, from the gas supply, so you will need to shut off the main coming into the back of the water heater or the boiler. Toggle switch on the side or and or uh, lockout disconnect might want to make sure you take care of that as well. Make sure all your safeties are, are in line before you start any, uh, any service work on it. And then uh, simply um, remove the top cover, just on clips. There's a couple of clips here that lock into the top. Then we'll go ahead and remove the front cover. Uh, typically there will be two screws up here um, just for a particular purpose. I just installed one. Take that out. cover off and this exposes the inside of the unit. Um, so your interface, these are your modules for each burner and then you can see you've got four burners in here. So uh, to open this and expose this we'll just take this Phillips screw out right here and this whole panel will slide right out of the way. Okay, so we open it up and uh, just a few things with component identification here. Um, each heat exchanger has its own isolation valve, blower assembly, uh, heat exchanger, ignition modules, uh, flow sensor, inlet temperature sensor. There's also another one just like that on the outlet piping. So there's an outlet temperature sensor. And this is the uh, manual, uh, not manual reset, this is uh, High limit, and if this fails open, um, you'll need to replace it. Covers, gas valve, uh, flame sensor is back here, and there's also a flapper valve in here as well. So, the um, way these work, this is a four module unit, so this is one million BTU. This is the master burner. This is burner number two, burner number three, and burner number four. Um, today we're going to work on uh, the master the master boiler uh, burner assembly. So we're going to start by uh, by pulling our gas valve here. Um, there's a brass nut on the back side here. So you take your crescent wrench and get in here, and you'll loosen up that guy. Slide that brass nut off, and be careful. There's a uh, actually a fiber gasket in here, so you'll want to remove that. Make sure you don't lose that. Uh, if you lose it. And you're going to need to replace it. So just set that aside. Um, Phillips screw to take out the wiring harness to the gas valve. Just loosen that up. Slide that out. And then there's actually a clip on the back side here, um, right below this elbow. And it's like a horseshoe style clip. You just kind of push down on the valve a little bit and you pull that clip out. That's what it looks like. Don't lose this, you're gonna need that obviously as well to put it back together. And then you simply just pull the gas valve out. Um, there's an O-ring on here. You wanna make sure that the O-ring stays below the groove. That groove in there is actually for that horseshoe clip, so the O-ring goes on below it. And I'll set that aside. Uh, this is our attenuator uh, for the blower. This is just basically designed to keep a little bit of the blower noise down. Uh, this comes out by just a quick little uh, forward turn, uh, not even a quarter turn. 
unlock it, slide it right out, and it has an O-ring on it as well. So pull it out of the way. Okay, um, so now we're at the blower assembly. We have, uh, this is our zero to 10 volt per modulation. So we'll pull that harness, and here's our 120 that comes into the blower. We'll pull that harness. And then we'll also need to pull this one here, which is our flapper valve. So it just unclips and pulls apart. Um, pretty hard to mess these up, so you just kind of slide those out of the way a little bit. Um, you'll pull your igniter leads, or ignition module leads. Pull your flame sensor lead. And now pretty much uh, we're at a point where we're just about ready to pull this, this whole assembly out. So the blower assembly will come out with the burner. Um, the ignition transformer, you'll see there's a couple of Phillips screws there. You'll need to loosen those just a little bit and slide that ignition transformer out of the way. And there's also a little grounding wire here with a Phillips screw and the same thing. You want to loosen that and slide that out of the way too. So we'll slide that ground out of there. This module just kind of comes up a little bit and we'll slide that out of the way and hang it over here. Okay, um, to get the rest of the uh, burner assembly apart, there's going to be four 10 millimeter um, nuts. You'll have to loosen all those, um, and we've already got these loose um, just for the purpose of making it a little bit easier. So we'll go ahead and we'll take those 10 millimeter nuts off. Okay, so we got those all out now. Uh, one of the things I like to do is just turn the sensor up a little bit so you don't hit it on the way out. And just go ahead and grab it. Slide it right out of there. And here's your burner assembly. Uh, so this is a fiber mesh burner. Here's your flame sensor. And here's your spark igniter. Um, always want to make sure that this refractory is intact. There's no cracks. Um, nothing disintegrated or doesn't look like it's falling apart or anything. Um, this is all intact. You're good, you can leave it in place. You can leave your burner in place as well. Uh, there is a gasket here, so when you do disassemble this, you may wanna order these for replacement, uh, just in case you take one apart and it happens to be cracked, brittle, broken. Um, you'll need to replace that as well. So uh, typically what I'll do is I'll go ahead and set that aside and I'll start with my heat exchanger. And you can see, uh, again, water tube style heat exchangers. So it's a coil style heat exchanger, which means that the water actually flows on the inside of these coils. Okay. And then our burner goes in and our heat transfers through those tubes to the water. And that's how we produce our hot water. Uh, there's also, as you can see from the back there, um, that's what they call a target wall. And that's also a refractory. Um, if that's distorted, um, broken, peeled apart, uh, disintegrated in any way, shape, or form, you're going to want to also change that uh, because that flame shoots right towards the back wall. So if it's not there, it could uh, potentially damage the backside of the heat exchanger. So um, we won't replace that obviously with this unit, but if I was to be doing this for a customer, I would definitely be pulling a target wall and replacing it because I can see it's, it's uh, brittle and deteriorated on the bottom there. Uh, the heat exchanger, what I would typically do is clean this. Um, if it's got any heavy deposits, uh, clean it with the wire brushes that I had here. So you're gonna come in and kind of wire brush it all down, get all, this, all the stuff off of the heat exchanger. And then I would take my air hose here and go in here and kind of want to make sure all those passages are nice and clear. Uh, if this heat exchanger happens to be green in color, looking uh, oxidized, you may want to consider looking at your venting and make sure that you don't have some sort of flue gas recirculation. Uh, the other thing that could be happening is you could potentially be sucking in refrigerant if this is in a uh, mechanical room with a chiller perhaps, or some sort of an air conditioning unit that leaks refrigerant, and it's open 
uh, for combustion air inside of the mechanical room, it could be sucking air um, that's contaminated with refrigerant, and that could be why the, uh, you see the oxidation build up on it. Um, once it's all clean, I've got it all wire brushed out, vacuumed out, blown out. Uh, typically like to take my garden hose, you don't want to get everything real wet here, so you got to kind of be careful and slow about this. But what I would do is just put a little bit of water in here and make sure it's all draining down. I get everything all flushed out. This will all go down into my acid neutralizer where I can then flush all the debris out and clean it out. So once I've, uh, once I've rinsed everything out, I've got everything all done on this end. I'm pretty good on the heat exchanger side. Um, now I'll come over to my burner assembly and what I'll typically do with my burner assembly is the same thing. I'll take some compressed air and we'll blow this out. And I'm using about 125 PSI. So, uh, once my burner's clean, um, actually blow out my blower. Make sure I have no dust build up or debris in there. And then uh, from that point, what I would do is I would take my igniter out and I would clean this with either uh, some steel wool or uh, some emery cloth. And then the same thing with the flame sensor, I would also take that out as well. Uh, this is where you'll need the Torx bit. Um, there was a point where the igniters were Phillips, um, but they've since changed those at Torx, so they're all Torx bits now, which is why you'll need the T20 to remove them. Uh, once you remove these and you clean these, You'll also want to inspect these gaskets. I would strongly recommend that you have these gaskets to replace them with because uh, they usually are brittle and they usually do tear and break and, and fall apart. So I uh, want to replace those gaskets with your flame sensor and your igniter back in. And then you would start your uh, assembly process. So assuming my, uh, my seal here, my O-ring for the burner uh, front cover is okay and my refractory is all good, I'm all done, ready to go. Go ahead and reassemble it. all back in and then what I'll do is I'll take uh, this 10 millimeter here we'll go in and we'll slug these all up and the reason I say the wrench too is because this one down here is a little bit hard to get to with a socket so just come in and slug that guy up Okay, so we got our burner and our blower back in. Uh, we can go ahead and put our ignition transformer back on. Okay, it slides down in there. We got those two Phillips screws. Slide those back up. ground wire, get your ground wire back on that little screw, which is right next to the ignition transformer screws. And then we'll put our leads back on here. Okay, put our lead back on our flame sensor. And we come back over here and we got to find our harnesses, so we're going to plug our uh, flapper valve back in. Zero to 10, and 120 for the blower. Okay, so we've got all that back together. Everything looks good. Take our gas valve, O-rings on, good. Go ahead and set that guy back in here. Kind of push down on it. That horseshoe clip. And it will be a little bit sloppy. Um, once 
once gas is put to it, it actually seals that. So we take our fiber gasket, slide that guy back in here. Slide that down. Okay. <clears throat> Have our wiring harness for the gas valve. That goes back in. Screw that back in. And that's it. That that is that uh, module is all reassembled, and uh, we're ready to move on to the next one. And do the same uh, series of services with each one. Uh, once we've completed all the services. Uh, one of the main things you want to make sure you check is your combustion air filter, which is right here, so you can slide that out, um, blow it out, clean it, replace the media or whatever, um, if, if it's bad enough to where you can't get it clean. And you got to watch because you got a little bit of stuff to get in it. Okay, um, so you don't keep hitting your head on this or your back on this. You may want to close the store back up after you've completed your service. Put the screw back in. And then the last thing we want to do, because we just cleaned our heat exchangers and we rinsed all that stuff from the heat exchangers down, um, it's all carbon manifolded together, so it all drains down into its own acid neutralizer. Nice thing about this boiler uh, water heater is it does have its own acid neutralizer. So you simply pull that bottom cover off, and you can slide your acid neutralizer out here. And there's our neutralizing media. So. Depending on what this looks like, if it still looks good like this with the rocks like this, um, I would leave it and, and what I would probably do is just uh, go ahead and flush it out with some fresh clean water until it runs out of the drain. Uh, your condensate drain comes in a bag that ties into a three quarter or one inch PVC drain that goes to the floor drain. So um, if the media is real bad and it's kind of um, clumpy and chunked together or seems to be disintegrated, you'll probably want to replace the media as well. Um, you can get that from Airco, or you can even just uh, buy some uh, some limestone. It will work as well too. All we're trying to do is just get rid of the acid so it doesn't hit the floor drains and, um, and eat up the floor drains that are cast iron in, in uh, the apartment complex or in the facility. So um, once we're completed with that, we'll go ahead and slide that back together. Put it back on the shelf here. And then we would install our front cover and our top cover, and then we're ready to put it back in service, turn our gas back on, resupply power, and uh, start the unit and test the operation. So uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.